So guys, today's video is going to be about creating silo sites for SEO, what they're about, how you set them up and what they look like. So search engines and humans alike prefer websites which are more organised and well structured. You know, it's easier to navigate, it's easier to understand. When it comes to search engines like Google, the easier it is for their bots to crawl, the better your rankings generally will be. And by creating a silo structure, you can group pages together and set up certain signals which tell the search engines in what way you want them to rank. So this is actually an example I took from the site of Bruce Clay, who is a uh, kind of an expert specifically on um, setting up silo structures. Um, his stuff's a bit advanced, but obviously if you want to, you can check out his website. As you can see from here, you've got power tools, which is say, for instance, you had a business selling power tools, you would then split it up accordingly. So all the cordless power tools could come under this, drills, planers, hammers, the electric ones, you've got drills, compressors, saws, and then gas powered in that way. Um, similarly, you could even split it up in terms of saws, drills, you know, compressors and then do it like that. Point is you want to group together like for like. The next thing to consider is how your internal linking is going to be set up, which is link siloing. So this is gonna help search engines crawl more of your pages. It will distribute link juice more effectively and it will act as a ranking signal so um, you can be a bit more aggressive with the use of your anchor text here. I mean there's a few methods you can do this in but my personal favourite is just to do it using a category silo. So I, I created, just as an example, uh, I'm actually of a pharmacy background so I created a small example, pharmacyportal.co.uk. No, it's really just, I've just kind of done it as a small experiment on the side, it's not full blown site but just gives you good um, skeleton to look at. The way this works, the way I would normally create a silo structure is firstly to create categories based on the keywords that I want to rank for. I would create content around each keyword, link the category post to each other using keywords as anchors, uh, making sure obviously that it's um, the key with your your placing links is still contextually relevant so don't force any links uh, and also link category posts to the target page using anchor text. This is how it looks visually and um, so as you can see I created a category buying pharmacy what you need to know and then I've created all the articles around it uh, and then another one category called locum pharmacist confessions so locum pharmacist this is just somebody uh, who's in the industry who you know works in different workplaces like a locum doctor basically and they don't stay in one place and this is all articles concerning um, that occupation so oh, as you can see from the structure if you go there um, I'm interlinking all the content pieces I'm linking back to the main category page so for instance this will link to this one and also to the home page just to ensure that the link juice is flowing correctly there's no hard and fast rules in terms of making sure which page is linked to li link to which, you know, um, uh, whether this links to this or this links to this one. You just don't want to neglect any pages and you only want to link where it's, where it's relevant, you know, where it looks natural. What you don't want is for any pages to become buried too deep within the website and um, if it's too deep within the website it may not get crawled by Google as effectively and subsequently the rankings could suffer when you do that. At the same time there's no need to overcomplicate it either and I've seen people talking about no following internal links. I'm not convinced that has any significant effect. Maybe some of you guys want to run an experiment and test that but personally I don't think it has any effect. Uh, and there's also no harm in cross-linking between categories, so, you know, linking from this one to this one if there's some contextual relevance. So that's it for today's video. I hope it's useful. It's a very brief overview, uh, but obviously if you want to see any you know, more advanced methods, you can check out what Bruce Clay has written. But really, I just don't want you to bog yourself down too much in this stage. It's about making sure there's a structure and it's that there is an interlinking um, function on your site because you're going to benefit from it.